Hi, I'm Anne-Marie and I'm a nutritionist and I work for Zest Health for Life and Zest promote health and well-being in local communities. So we're back in the Ministry of Food kitchen and I'm joined by resident chef Simon. Hi, I'm Ruth. And together we're going to be making for you a healthy, simple dish, which initially might seem quite difficult, but actually when we get going you're going to see how easy it is. We've also got our audience with us again, so hi guys, thanks for coming. Hi. Um, right, should we get started? Yeah, definitely, Anne-Marie. When I say sort of risotto, sort of what would you say springs to your mind? Mm, probably hard work springs to a lot of people's minds, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it does, yeah. But, um, Should we ask the audience what they think? Yeah, what do you think? Guys, what do you think? Um, yeah, I've never made a risotto before. I wouldn't know where to start. Can you mm. help? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think risotto is kind of one of those dishes that, um, if you've not made it before, it can feel like it's quite daunting. Um, but it's really, really easy to make. And the more practice and the more times you do it, the better your risotto is going to be. So what do we need? What ingredients so, do we need today? The ingredients that we've got, we've got a white onion and we've got a clove of garlic. We've got one finely sliced carrot, one tin of um, chopped tomatoes, a can of peas, one and a half pints of a low salt veg stock, uh, a tablespoon of oil, 50 grams of parmesan and 250 grams of Borio risotto rice. So again we're using the onion and garlic. Um, which we tend to use with most of our recipes because it, it seems to be basically the basis for most recipes and they're really handy to, to have around if you've got onion and garlic. Yeah, I think that's going to provide us with the real, the background flavour for the dish. So yeah. That's what we're really after, yeah. And really, there's not really that much ingredients here, is there, for this? So it's, again, it's quite a... And the ingredients that are here are very cost effective as well, so ideal to make if you're a student. Yeah. Mm. Right, should we get cracking? Yeah, let's get cracking. So we have preheated our pan mm -hmm. um, and the reason why we've done that is again basically because um, of the nutritional value of the oil that we're going to put in there so do you want to put in there a tablespoon of oil yep. Marie and that's um, vegetable oil or a, an olive oil is absolutely fine you pop that in there if you get your pan hot first that oil is going to disperse out through the pan and you're going to get a real nice coating along the bottom of the pan which is excellent really and you want that because um, if you use less oil, it's going to be a lot healthier for you. So once that's dispersed in the bottom of the pan, I'll just show you that so you can see we've got a nice, nice cover in there. And Marie, do you want to pop in that, um, yep. pop in that sliced onion there, the diced onion? We'll have a little bit of a sizzle now. That's good. So again, that's another benefit to heating your pan up is you're going to get that nice sizzling sound. And then we've got our clove of garlic there, Amri. I think that wants to go in also. That goes in at the same time as the, as the onions. It's, okay. quite a, it's quite a big onion, that, to be fair. <laughs> Should we get all those bits in? That's lovely. So you don't normally put garlic in first, do you? It burns if you just... Yeah, so it's, it it's nicer to keep it sort of... Yeah. Pop it in with your, with your onions. I'll just pop those to the side there. Once you've put, you put your onions in, we can turn that heat up slightly, you know, because... Um, there's a large mass in the pan, so it's you know cooled the pan down a little bit. So we've got that on like number six now. Now this top actually um, goes up to number nine in its heat. Okay. So if you were cooking on a gas ring, you'd be looking at about two thirds of the heat. Right. On the largest ring, and we're going to cook those onions. Oh, might go up one more actually. We're going to cook those onions until they go sort of transparent, really. Just talking about the background flavour, when you're cooking the onions, you're releasing the natural sugars Ooh. that are inside, really. Yep. And that's going to, like I say, add, add a sweetness to the dish. So you can see that the onions are start, just starting to change colour now, aren't they? I'm really, yep. They're going to need another through. two or three minutes, actually, yeah. just to... You do want to get them nice and... So just while this cooked. is cooking, then, what... What's the difference with the risotto rice and the regular rice? Because it's a little bit different, isn't it, from... I mean, the reason why risotto is, is, is quite a good dish, dish for novice cooks as well is because, um, basically, the rice grain is, is actually quite round. Right. So it's not like a long grain rice or a basmati rice where you, you might know that you'll, and you'll have seen people and they wash the starch away yeah. from the grains. So the wine's got sticky, doesn't it? You want, yeah, you, don't, you, know, you don't want those particular grains to be sticky, but you want a risotto rice to be sticky. So when we actually pop the risotto in the pan, we're going to be really mixing it up and bashing the grains and 
releasing the starches that are surround the grains and that's going to help create a really nice creamy mm. sauce so yeah that's a, a, a good reason to if, you, if you're not that experienced at cooking rice to start with a risotto the next job we've got we're just going to pop our carrots in and we've got one one chopped carrot okay. there so they're chopped it's yeah. quite small pieces, Peeled aren't they? And, and, and chopped relatively fine. And then just give those a good mix round. That's nice. We'll just give that a minute or so. So what's the key then to cooking a good risotto? I think the key to cooking a good risotto is always make sure that you get a really nice base for the risotto. So for this one as well, maybe you could add celery, something like that. That's yeah. a nice, nice background flavour. The thing with the risotto, you've got to stick with it, so you're not like walking around the kitchen. You really need to be stirring and yeah, moving you it all have to the keep time stirring, because don't it'll you? catch on the bottom. So yeah. Um, yeah, you do need to stick stick with it. So I think I think that's about ready now, Anne Marie. Okay. Um, and then we've got our stock to go in. We oh. need about half of that. That's one and a half pints of a low salt vegetable stock. You can get right. that from um, the majority of good suppliers. The health food stores yeah. um, do that. There's some good ones in the market. So, so again, we're, about, we're sticking with the low salt, aren't we, really, yeah, with this recipe? Yeah, with the low salt one, yeah. You want about half of that in so there. So half of this? Yeah, that's right. And then again, when you have the liquid, just give that a good stir round. That's perfect. And then your next job is to add your risotto rice. Okay. So there's 250 grams in there, and you can see that those grains are... Is it all going in? Yeah, I don't know if you want to show the... Come with those nice, those grains, those big fat grains. I'll let you pop those in there. And then just give that a stir. And then you really want to like agitate those grains, Anne-Marie. The reason why you don't add all the stock in at once is basically because those grains are rubbing and bashing against each other now. Right. And that's what's going to be, you know, help to release the starches that are inside there. So it's also good exercise as well, yeah. this dish. <laughs> Always try and go for seasonal ingredients, maybe local ingredients, you know, that's um, because they're going to be much more cost effective as well. Yeah. Um, You've always got a bit of leftover veg and stuff hanging around, haven't you, really? Yeah, definitely. You know, you can get the um, good one, the good ones that you can use are the little, uh, you can get the little dried mushrooms from the health food store. And they're a really nice um, stock cupboard ingredient to mm. have in. Um, and again, things like this, you know, we talked about having a you know star bought ingredient so you can have your risotto in your uh, in your in your cupboard. We're going to be putting in some peas later, so you know you could have those tinned or um, you could have those frozen. Yeah. So the, you, you've got your stock, and there are things that you could have just in your star cupboard. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Handy to have about, really. So that's going really well, Anne Marie. So that's getting a bit thicker yeah, now, isn't it? To go like, you can see that the, the, what's happening is the rice is starting to absorb the stock, basically. That's what's happening. Lovely. Did we have another question from the audience? Any questions? What happens if all the liquid isn't absorbed? And can you put meat or fish in? You can put meat or fish in. I mean, we're doing uh, a vegetable one today. I mean, because we're doing quite a cost-effective one, but um, the world is your oyster. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you've made a Sunday dinner and you've got a little bit of leftover chicken, this would be excellent because you could make a stock out of your carcass and you could flake up your chicken and pop that in, again, with a few peas maybe, some spinach. Yeah. You know. Prawns maybe yeah, is a nice one. Yeah, prawns, um, different fishes. And just with your stock, the reason why we haven't actually added all the stock in at once again is just to clarify that point you want it to absorb a little bit of a, at a time so if you were to put that all in there the rice grains wouldn't be wouldn't have that friction against each other so they're not creating that mm -hmm. nice smooth silky sauce which is going to surround the risotto when it's cooked so we can just see now that that's just starting to absorb it you can see that steam coming away from the pan we'll pop that in there pop a bit more stock in so you just want to add it a little bit at a time, maybe three or four different stages. That's going to take, sorry, probably, I think you're about, probably going to be about nine, ten minutes away okay. there, sort of, on Marie. I think it's time for the tomatoes to go in now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah? Just give that a little stir around, Anne-Marie. That's looking good. 
one of the crucial facts is whenever you're making a risotto is just that, that, that at the end point when you sort of make your readjustments with your stock because you want the grains um, to be what's what what's known as al dente and basically that translates to to the tooth yeah so you want the risotto, a crunch to it please. yeah you want the you want it to be soft but also crunchy um and that's that because that's going to give it a real nice texture and another good thing that you can do is if you do have any leftover risotto if you spread it out onto a tray and cool it in your fridge the next day you can make it into little pates and coat it in oh. uh, semolina and just and um, fry it in a frying pan and that's really nice also do you have any more questions from the audience what's the difference between a risotto and a paella oh, that's a good question they are i mean they are they probably originate sort of in the same fashion really they're both rice dishes um and probably you know the but i mean in both particular dishes they're you know like classed as use-up dishes so um the difference between a paella and a risotto though is basically the pan that they cook it in so when um they cook a paella it's actually in a paella dish and mm -hmm. they don't keep stirring it so they um cook the paella and let a crust form on the bottom of the pan that's that's a good sort of when you have a good paella it's it, one of the best things is that you have that crust whereas you don't get that with the yeah. risotto and the, i think the, the grains are actually different as well that they use in there thank you right Amory. so you can see that the risotto um rice is um absorbed all the stock now and it's still quite an it's soupy sort of consistency and that's what you want you know because you want there to be some sauce around it's in quite the grains. creamy isn't it yeah so i think we need to put in our uh, peas now so we've got okay. a tin of peas there so we're using tinned yeah we are for this one but okay. um, you could use frozen yeah frozen are really handy actually to have around in your freezer um because a lot of people think they're not as good but actually they are because when they're frozen all the nutrients are locked in there so they are really healthy um, what you're after is sort of like, you know, just as you lifted the spoon up there, you're after that dropping consistency. So if you pop in the 50 grams of parmesan, yep. I just didn't realise you still had the cling film on there. But Can we, could you off. use another sort of cheese or...? No, you definitely want to use parmesan for this really. Right. Yeah. Um, Are we putting it all in? Yeah, that's 50 grams there. Yeah. Pop that in and then give that a good stir around. And then the, um, you'll see the sauce starting to almost thicken up and mm, really take on nice. a, like a creamy sort of consistency yeah. if you were adding fresh herbs you'd probably do it at this later okay. stage now you know things like basil would be nice yeah at this point and i think that's about about ready to serve now on marie brilliant so do you need to get a bowl and yes please There you have it. Mission accomplished, I think. Yeah, definitely. So that's another healthy, simple recipe from myself and Simon. And remember, if you want any more of these recipes, if you visit www.yourstudentbox.co.uk.